When you hit the gas and the car leans back, it's called squat. When you hit the brakes and the car leans forward, it's called dive. When you have too much of those things, your car just sucks. My name is Philip Kranik. I've uh, been working or uh, designing suspensions for a number of years, designed my own parts, started my own company, and now I'm the uh, head chassis setup engineer um, for the Rehagen Racing uh, Pirelli World Challenge Mustang. We're going to continue the discussion. We had to move into the office since uh, there's fabrication going on out in our shop right now. But that's good because this chair is a lot more comfortable. Any anytime you um, accelerate or decelerate a car, there's going to be weight transfer. And the focus of these anti-dive, anti-squad discussions is the, the rate at which that weight transfer is going to occur. I've drawn out um, uh, a longer car here to illustrate a couple of things. We've got the front axle and the rear axle and then somewhere you know in here we're going to have the, the center of gravity. Anti-dive controls the uh, compression of the front suspension under braking and with the layout we have here, we have approximately 25% anti-dive built into the front suspension. So what's, what that's telling us is that um, of all the load transferring to the front tires, 25% of it will go through the suspension linkage and through the geometry um, effectively and go straight into the, the tire contact patch. Then the remaining 75% is going to first compress the springs and the shocks and eventually make its way here and that'll be at a slightly delayed rate. On, on most cars, you're, you're ending up at about 70% 70, 70 front, 30% rear uh, weight distribution after, you know, under threshold braking. If you have 100% out of dive, it'll just be, you know, you just won't really be going through the shocks and the springs for it to get there and be there like right away. Um, in the rear, you, it's sometimes nice to have 100% anti-squat. You probably wouldn't want 100% anti-dive on the front ever. Like uh, on all of these, you can go into a lot more than 100%. And um, what that means is that when you get on the brakes, the front of the car is going to be lifting. Or the back of the car, when you accelerate, it'll rise. Which isn't uncommon on drag cars, they yeah. do that all the time. And that's definitely useful because what's better than just getting the full weight on the back tires? Well, getting an acceleration force of what is above and moving in the other directions. You know, in, in racing, for, for example, you really want to uh, load the tires as hard and as quickly as possible because um, the whole point is to keep the car at its limits the entire time and if there's lag or or time you know waiting for loads to build up then you're not really accomplishing that uh, or if you're running a low ride height you also don't want the front end to drop a bunch and scrape like any of your your front end pieces that that happens a lot on say like on new mustangs i've driven some some boss 302s off the factory floor and uh, just out here on the track with stock, stock springs, you, I can actually get the front splitter to scrape the ground. You know, there's not really a good way to adjust the anti-dive. Sometimes you can shim the lower control arm to a different angle um, on the rear mount, um, but that's about it. Like, unless you have a, a suspension that's specifically designed for those adjustments, it's probably not gonna happen. So you'd have to raise or lower the rear pickup point or raise or lower the front pickup point to accomplish it. It's not really related to the, what's happening out at the spindle. It's important to get a good set of shocks on your car because it is possible to do some tuning that's not like the anti-dive, but if, with the actual dampers. 
by changing some of the stiffnesses. Um, the only problem with that is, is that unless you have a lot of different levels of adjustment, it's going to have, it can have some negative consequences. If you stiffen them up so stiff that you reduce nosedive, it's probably going to, um, you know, it's probably not going to have the mechanical grip through going through the, the corner that you're looking for. Uh, the general notion, it seems, is that people think that a stiff car handles better. Right, like you, you, you put stiff springs on it and, and it just goes around corners better. But what they're really feeling is that um, that inertia of having to wait for the springs to compress and the shock, everything to move to get the load transfer, they're, they're, uh, they're experiencing um, less of that and it feels like essentially the load transfer is happening more quickly, which is the the point of anti-dive, anti-squat, higher roll centers, that allows you to maintain your softer springs but have that feeling of, of more responsiveness. It's kind of nice to, to put some of these anti-features into your car because you don't have to have the harsh ride. Like say you're just cruising down the freeway and you hit a big bump, it still will have soft compliant springs and it'll you know, be more forgiving. Um, but when you stab the brakes or stab the throttle, it'll, it'll feel like it has the stiffer springs in it, but it just won't. The, the easiest, you know, if you've ever been in um, like a really soft car, like say you jump into like a, a Ford Explorer or some SUV that has an automatic and... Caprice Wagon. Caprice, exactly. Like at a stop sign or at a stoplight when you're bored, power brake it, but don't spin the tires and see what happens, right? You're gonna normally, even though the car does not roll, the back end is gonna compress. Yeah. And that, that tells you that it doesn't have a lot of anti-squat, for example. The angle of the torque arm is irrelevant and it doesn't even matter where it's attached on the rear axle, we just care about the length of it. And it's, the, the length is, we, we know that the instant center is somewhere in a plane at the, where it's pivoting on the front. And then the, the height of that is determined by these lower control arms. So we've got this, factory mounting point on the front and we have these two adjustment holes here so if we'll do the suspensions and glue so we got the torque arm right here and then we've got the the lower control arms and we can either have it right there or right here and if we've got the ground oh that was not a straight line but so if these were if these were these angles that the lower control arms pointed at or these positions corresponding to these three lower holes then you'd basically have 100% anti-squat for the top one then maybe like 75% right here and 50% right here. It's, it's bolted solid to the axle, so if you rotate the rear end housing, it's solidly attached. So basically it, 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 it controls the rotation of the rear end. It's really um, taking all the, the torque loads and keeping this planted. So if you've got the tires trying to, trying to rotate the rear end due to them you know, turning, then this is going to plant right where it's at and oppose that load. So the final result is the car has to move. Basically two control arms here and that they lock it in from doing that. And then you've got your, your torque arm that's basically one piece with the rear end housing. It could be welded on, but if when it tries to do this, it won't let it. So it has to yeah, it has to apply torque to the 
the tires. So we'll see what happens on the new Mustang with the IRS. I definitely feel that like just driving them around, just stock or modified, even when they're not modified, like it's much easier to break the rear tires loose because it doesn't have very much anti-squat. Because they can't, or otherwise the suspension geometry would be too screwed up. I, I would look in the torque arm for the street because you need stiffer rear springs um, if you don't have a lot of anti-squat, which is super bumpy on the street. The torque arm won't be bumpy unless you're in full attack mode and you're trying to get a lot of grip, which at that point you probably don't care if it's a little bumpier. Like you can run your soft springs and when you're just cruising down the freeway, it feels nice because you're not applying any torque to the rear axle. It feels normal, but you know when you do get on the gas, the car is just gonna sit flat. It's not gonna have a lot of, you know, it's not gonna do this. Actually, we we covered anti dive, anti squat, and in the previous segment, we covered uh, roll centers as well, and and all of them involve the instant centers of the suspension and either viewed from the front or from the side. But the bottom line is in general, if you have a tight track with a lot of directional changes, you want more antis of everything. You want higher roll centers because it's gonna reduce the, the feeling of inertia in the car. It's gonna be more responsive and it's also gonna load the tires quicker, put more heat into them quicker. Um, if you're doing big sweepers, like high speed tracks that require more stability, then you're gonna wanna have uh, less antis of everything, like anti-dive, anti-squat, and lower roll centers, because all of them, uh, if you separate the instant center from the center of gravity of the vehicle, and have it spaced further apart, it's always gonna lead to a greater inherent stability of the vehicle, so that means you can push it harder, it'll be more forgiving, but it'll be slower to your inputs. But that's why we use it for high speed stuff because you're not changing direction quickly. The only time you change direction is if something happens on the track and you need to avoid. But you're just, you know, you're trying to go through those fast, high speed, and the car is in a set for longer, so you're going for maximum grip versus uh, responsiveness. Having a driver that knows how to communicate and that understands a lot of this stuff like you know and engineers don't usually make the best race car drivers because they're usually kind of easy on the equipment because they're a little leery but uh, <laughs> but if you can get the right combination of basically a, a race car that driver that's also a suspension design engineer it's pretty nice.